Thanks for tuning in to a very special edition of SHS TV. Every Sunday from this pool pit and sanctuary, our very own Bishop Larry Trotter delivers the most powerful word, and that's exactly what you tuned in for. If you're seeking prayer or encouragement, you can call our church right now at 773-721-6178, or you can visit our website at www.sweetholyspiritonline.org. And now, exactly what you tuned in for, our very own Bishop Larry Trotter. Take it away, Bishop. Peter, thank you, Rock. Let the church say yes. Father, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Speak to your people. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said amen. One verse, verse 10. But the God of all grace, Come on. who has called you unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that ye have suffered a while, wow. Talk to somebody, tell them your suffering was just for a while. Just for a while. Just for a while. Just for a while. Woo! Uh, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Before you take your seat, get somebody by the hand and tell them it's over. Yes, God. <laughs> Somebody ought to say, oh, this opportunity to stand with the prophets of old, particularly Jeremiah. He caught it already. Jeremiah laments in his book, The Weeping Prophet. He said, it's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. They are new every morning. I'm honored to have my son in the ministry, Pastor David Pope, from the West Side, and his lovely wife, Tamara, and uh, some of the saints from Brotherly Love. Uh, the Lord has blessed me this year to have preached over 700 times. Stand and proclaim his gospel in 39 cities and two countries. I don't take it for granted because I, go, I went up and the air and landed safely over a hundred times so I can shout on that but in this day and time if you made it to the store and back to school and back to the doctor and back you, you, you do know they shoot people down but you made it so we ought to thank the Lord and understand that we are blessed we have arrived in the last 40 minutes of 2012 a year that has delivered much agony and pain for many. A year that showed us all kinds of bloodshed and hurt. It was a year for some of us that where economic pressure was virtually unbearable. I need my honest church for about 10 minutes. I'm talking to people who would admit that there were some days in some months that you left the day drained. Where y'all at? Drained spiritually, drained physically, drained emotionally, and certainly drained financially. I, I know this is not the norm, but some of us have had the experience of having to uh, uh, drive and put a little gas in, and then drive and put a little more gas in, and then drive and hope the Lord give us some money. It's been a long time since you said fill it up. But now we are on our way to the greater. I wish you prophesied to somebody say greater is coming. Yes, I do that. Uh, it's, uh, uh, 2011 and 2012 
literally drained us, and so I, I'm on God's side, and I know that 13 must be a year of change. In the world system, 13 symbolically means bad luck. Most hotels don't have a 13th floor because they, uh, the mindset is that it 13 is bad luck. But we must understand as the saint, is that Charles? Lord have mercy, Charles in church. I can see way back there. Ain't seen you since last year this time. Pray to your strength in the Lord. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Pay your 52 weeks of tithes and offerings. And come and repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we have to add Jesus' name. Get them spirits off you where you've been where you weren't in church. <laughs> Who else I ain't seen? But, but we as saints know that there is no such thing as bad luck. Because as believers, we are either in one category or the other. We're either blessed or we're cursed. Uh, uh, and as I heard the Lord say clearly, and he speaks to us clearly, he said, this is a year of greater favor. Greater than what we had before. And then uh, I know some of you don't come to 1130. You might have called uh, the, uh, Anthony or Terrence at the other services. But when Brandon got up, he tapped into the same vein. And he said, this is going to be a year of the unexplainable. I've been feasting upon greater favor and unexplainable. See, unexplainable is when the Lord bless you and everybody's like, how did she get that? And the truth be told, you don't even know how you got it. And unexplainable is when unexplainable is when you move into a ram and, and, and you start, hey bro, you start driving something and you know your credit is not up to par. You know your income don't match what you're driving. So you can't even explain it other than say it's favor. Can God heal somebody and the doctors don't understand it and you have to say it's just unexplainable because he was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes I am. No. I believe God enough that God can just give you a house with a 400 uh, credit score. Somebody else say, my year is coming. It is the year of past promises revealed. For whatever he, he promised in the past, and we meet the requirements, walk faithfully and blameless and walk like him, he's going to reveal what he promised. The reference is the story of Abraham. Abraham was told uh, uh, to go in and sleep with his wife, even though he was 90-something years old, and his wife was up past the flower of her age. But uh, he didn't do that. He went and slept with Hagar, and Hagar birthed Ishmael. And then he said, well, Lord, I thought this is a God. I thought this was the one. He said, now go back and do what I told you to do. Go back and sleep with Sarah. He said, Sarah's too old. Now, if you have time, do the Math. The, 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 the ages between Abraham's time of birth and the son and Sarah's time with birth and the son was 13 years difference. So the number 13 then suggests that it's God's promise, whatever he promised, in 13 years he did manifest it. I got two or three people here that somewhere down the line, God promised you some stuff that you haven't seen yet. So 13, he's going to deliver it. I wish I had one. He gonna, and if you read the book, the number 13, we could have we could have been in worse shape than what we are, but God came to pull us up and out. The number 13 is not an evil number that the devil uh, has us thinking that he's in charge. The number 13 is a number of great blessings given by God. The number 13 promises us an underlying knowing that God can make some stuff happen that nobody knows how it came to pass. The number 13 has the underlying fact that if, we, if we're determined and we say it and we speak it, it can happen regardless of circumstances. The number 13 is the difference of what man can do versus what God can do. The number 13 in biblical numerology is the number of new life. And I, I got excited about this. I put my coat on with the fur around the, uh, around the thing. I ain't wore it but once and I come in with my and my hat cocked to the side and the lady said to me she said oh are you celebrating new years did it take all that I said you don't understand I'm not just celebrating new years I'm celebrating a new me and all y'all that don't want to celebrate get a number and get in line because I got somewhere to go 
I wish I had it. Somebody understand that. You got to decide. You see, we have uh, God's, uh, God's blessing to reinvent ourselves however many times as we need necessary. So when you feel good about yourself, you can know that God is taking you higher, higher, higher. And it's, and, and it's necessary. The number 13 promises always uh, has a time and a space between which it was first given and it will manifest. Therefore, we must look quickly at what strained us and dismiss it. Uh, the Lord says, and this is a prophetic word we heard on early on. The Lord said, this is the year that your hands will touch it. Please don't sleep on this. Say this with me. This is the year my hands will touch it. This is the year that your feet will walk it. What are you talking about? You see, you see, if I had time to talk, I should have kept me a little more time. If I had time to talk, you know, you, most of us are really not living the life that we dream. We got through the year, but a whole lot of stuff we ask God for, it hasn't happened yet. So this got to be the year that my hands touch it. I don't know what you're reaching for. This got to be the year that my feet walk it. Every place that the sole of my foot shall trod, that has God already given me to go in and possess it. You, you know, you, you're really not living the life that you dream. Uh, 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 Apostle, Apostle Preston said, uh, when we played house, we didn't play house as a single dad. We didn't play house as a single mom, but we had everybody in the house. Somebody was husband, wife, and children. This is the year. That your hands will touch it and your feet will walk it. I wish I had somebody could see yourself walking into your new house, your new building, your new job, your new stuff. Take a step. I tell you to take a step. You know I'm right. It's 11:28, and most of us here are not working the jobs that we really want. So my hands gotta touch it. Somebody say, "Help me touch it, Lord." Most of us here are not in the relationship that we really want to be in. So God's got to order my feet to the right man, woman. Y'all ain't talking. You don't really have the income that you want. We just had to deal with what we had. But this is the year where he... I, I, uh, I, I want to show you something. Amos, go to Amos. Th this is the scripture that's going to carry you through the year. Everybody got faith, say me. Uh, the Amos, Amos, the prophetic word comes from Amos. It's a small book. Amos is uh, one of the, considered one of the minor prophets. In chapter 9, verse 15, sit down. Y'all make me nervous. I ain't there yet. 9, verse 15. And verse 15. Hear this. Somebody say, this is my year to touch it. Come on, say, this is my year to touch it. This is my year to walk it. This is my year to receive it. <sighs> Verse 15 says, And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled out of the land which I have given them. What God has for you is for you. Can't nobody take it back. All right, all right, you get it. Let, now, please, nobody shout but me. I'm going to read that to you from the message translation. I'm going to help two, three of y'all. The message translation says it like this. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. Wait, wait, wait. He's, the message says it like this. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen to you so fast. Till your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of others. 
you gonna be blessed so much till you ain't gonna be able to keep up. Can I add a line there? And the other Negroes ain't gonna be able to catch you. You're only missing it. He says, everything is going to happen at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring out of the mountains and the hills. And then he says, I will make everything right for my people. I'm going to let them rebuild their houses, plant vineyards, and drink good wine. And their gardens and eat fresh vegetables and I will plant them in their own land and here's the another part he said and they'll never again be uprooted by nobody or nothing somebody ought to jump and say it's over <laughs> so he said now I, I want to capture that he said it won't be now it won't be long now uh, it won't be long it won't be long now that things are going to start happening for you so fast until your head going to swim and the answer the people looking at you ain't going to understand because it's unexplainable mm. we have been given God's authority to say what we want to say if God says it's over it's over Almost 3,000 people in Chicago were laid off in 2012. It's over. Over 500 people were killed with over 300 uh, young people in gun violence. This year, more people lost houses than ever before. A foreclosure. An unusual amount of people had some kind of stroke. We heard it in the testimony. Young people having stroke. Young people being diagnosed with diabetes. Young me But if the Lord says prophetically, I'm trying to speak prophetically and apostolically over your life, you got to leave this year saying whatever is not complete in my life, whatever was short, is it's over. I'm leaving it in 2012 and I'm going into 2013. Somebody say greater. So here, here's a couple of reasons. Oh, How can you say that? How can you say that, Bishop? Hallelujah. 27 minutes and counting. Now I ain't, ain't going to ask y'all. I ain't going to ask nobody to help me praise God when we hit 12 y'all can be consumed with balloons y'all can be consumed with what you got on but I understand that the level of my praise will dictate the level of my blessings I don't apologize for dancing in your face Talk to somebody say, because you have no clue what I've been through. Okay. So, so, why, 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 how, how do you, how can you say it's over? First of all, well, y'all, uh, because he is a God of grace. Say that one, because he is a God of grace. Y'all do understand grace, don't you? We are here because we're the benefactors of God's grace. The acronyms that spell out grace, G-R-A-C-E, God's righteousness at Christ's expense. God's righteousness at Christ's expense. His grace is first of all, first of all, twofold. God is the God of all grace. Just as his gifts are buried to be supplies of our need, we then not only understand him as uh, uh, the God is the gift of all grace, but we stand in the true grace of God. Do not fool yourself. It was not your intelligence or your strength or your ability that made you last to 364 days. Y'all didn't hear me. We are only a couple of minutes left. But you made it this far by the grace of God. The song says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. But the verse that speaks to us tonight is through many dangers toils and snares I have already come. It was grace that brought me safe thus far and the same grace will lead me on. Somebody say thank God for grace. The manifestation of grace gives him the power to remind us that if we speak a thing, if we decree a thing, it shall come to pass. When we say it's over, we got to praise him like it's over. We got to talk like it's over. We got to act like it's over with the knowledge that by remaining, being remaining faithful to Christ, we stand in the true grace of God. We can take, uh, we can't take what people say and count on that. But when God says something, he backs it up. Because the Bible says he swears unto himself 
He makes a name for himself. And so we take comfort in knowing that the God of all grace will not just be with us in 2012, but all of the, uh, the rest of the year and all the rest of our lives. We just got to let him manifest what he wanted to manifest. The same grace that brought us to December 31 in 2012 is going to carry us into 2013. But the God of all grace, he gained the title God of all grace because he let the record speak for him. You will remember Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. They were going to fight the people of Amorites, the Amorites and the Moabites and the people of Mount Seir. And he says there, he said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And the Bible says, y'all know the text, the Bible said to them, he said, now y'all ain't going to have to fight in this battle because the battle ain't yours, no how. He said, well, what are we going to do? He said, uh, set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes, y'all, uh, this is prophecy number three or four, sometimes in this new year, you ain't going to have to do nothing but be still. Uh, I don't know why you're wasting so much time with haters and demons and devils because they're going to have to take a number and everything they did to you is coming back on them. All you got to do is be still and let the Lord fight your battle. They said negative stuff. And let me tell y'all something while I'm on it. Y'all stop letting people put you out there in their mess. Why are you carrying messages for somebody else? You know, some of y'all just love mess. Your, 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 your prayers are going to be messed up because somebody of influence got you acting a fool. Or people who think they got influence. I'm so sick of some of this foolishness. I, I still want to be with them even though Bishop and them ain't well, well, yeah, I can't pick your friends for you, but don't let your friends get you in trouble in God's space. And y'all stop having these little things on the Facebook and putting my name on it. I don't know about it. Because my name shouldn't be nowhere if I haven't approved of it. They're not liking me, Lord. But in order to have God's grace on our lives, there got to be order in how we do things. Let the record show that this church does not have a first lady. <laughs> Jolie Ari Robinson. I just want to do this and that and the other. Bishop fell out with so-and-so, pastor so-and-so. How you know? You don't know what that's all about. I'm running over to pastor's church. I'm going to sit down. That's why people leave church so quickly and go to other churches and sitting there looking crazy because they know they're supposed to be here. But they fall out over little stuff. And you have no clue. All them people that cop that mess going with Bishop Morton, we sat back and laugh at them because me and Bishop are fine and they still keeping mess going on. Stop it! Grace is upon you for this season. You do what you want to do and do it right by God and clean up your record and don't let the people around you mess up your track record because except it be for the grace of God, you could be in a terrible situation. They didn't got tight on me, Lord. He gets the name grace is upon him because he imputes grace. Now, the last fight that you were in, the only reason you won it was not because you had skills in fighting. Oh, God. But he graced you with the ability. I wish I had somebody. On your weakest day, you're stronger. Anybody ever been out of gas and the Lord grace you with the ability? You didn't feel like you're going to make it. Grace you to the ability to go to the next place. You was tired and he graced you. Uh, one of the fellas came uh, earlier this year and he preached all three services. He said, Bishop, I don't know how you do all that. I don't know how you preach 739 to 11. I say there's a grace that goes along with it. When the grace runs out, I can't do it no more. 
but when the grace is on you you will fulfill your assignment I'm talking to people tonight that have a calling on their lives and things that you got to fulfill you need God's grace resting upon you to get it done grace rested upon the wedding in Cana of Galilee when they ran out of water and, and ran out of wine he told them to set the water out and let the water turn into the wine in Cana of Galilee and somewhere between the pouring in and the pouring out water became wine grace uh, came upon this woman that pressed her way through the crowd and said if I could just touch the hem of his garment I know I'll be made whole grace came upon this blind man and uh, the God of all grace showed out at the blind man's situation the Bible said that Jesus anointed the blind man's eyes and told him go in the pool of Siloam and washed and then CNN and all the other fellows came and said uh, uh, is he the son of God or not he said I don't know what y'all talking about but the only thing I know I was blind Ooh, but now I see I wish I had 10 folk here that could not explain how you got where you got spiritually physically and otherwise and you say I don't know exactly how it happened but thank God I was blind now I see grace became necessary for a man at the pool of Siloam at the pool 38 years saying that Jesus came there and said well, you, you want to be made whole man he said every time I get in the pool somebody comes before me he say, rise, take up your bed and walk. Grace even showed up when a weary and a wounded woman by the name of Mary and Martha were entertaining Jesus. And they come there and they, they had entertained him in the past, but their brother, the breadwinner, had died. The grace came to the graveside and said, Lazarus, come forth. He had to call him by name because he had more power than he, if he had just said, come forth, everybody dead would have come out the grave. The same grace is here tonight. Talk to your neighbor. Say grace is available for you tonight. You don't have to leave here the way you came. If you came here without Christ, you can leave him with Christ. If you came here not connected, you can leave here connected. Uh, somebody tonight, as Bishop Patterson said, you could be saved, you could be healed, you can be delivered, and you could be set free because of his grace. He'll come where you are. He'll sit on your level. He'll speak your language, and he'll change your direction. If any man, woman, boy, girl be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. I was uh, attending the Oxford Roundtable in Oxford, England. I read the instructions early. A large part of the admission into Oxford, you had to wear the right stuff. So I put on my, my red bishop's uh, Rabat with full neck collar, my cross and chain. I was like the Pope. <laughs> Ring on my finger. Now, some of the delegates from the states were improperly dressed because they didn't read. I ain't gonna stay there. Yeah, you gotta read for yourself. And they missed the first session because they were not covered in the right stuff. But I wasn't better than any of them. But because I had on the right stuff, the man said, come on in. Because I had on the right stuff, he didn't, he didn't check my work visa or my passport. He didn't check none of that. Because I had the right stuff on, he said, come on in. Well, the Lord told me to tell you tonight that you are covered in his grace. And because you are covered with the right stuff, you can walk in whatever you want to walk in. I wish I had somebody tell your neighbor, I got grace to go get what I need to get. Number two. Fifteen minutes and counting. Because he is a God of grace. Secondly, because he called you out. We're the ecclesia. We've been called out. The text says called to eternal glory. He gives us something, you all, please take this with you all year, that will not pass away. We got to understand and appreciate the call. He called you. Who in their right mind want to stay in darkness when light is available? Who in their right mind want to stay in sickness when healing is available? Who in their right mind want to stay in loneliness when companions, you know they're trying to talk to you. Somebody want to take you out. Hey, you tell me, I'm just going to stay by myself. He's a nice man. Want to take you out. Can you order? You'll be, I don't want to stay by myself. I'm just married to Jesus. You're not married to Jesus. 
spiritually, but not physically. <laughs> Who in their right mind wants to stay in poverty when prosperity is available? Who in their right mind want to stay in struggle when he says, I got some stuff for you. I searched the word called throughout the scriptures and find out every believer in here, those that are streaming the network, are called from something to something. We're in the last 15 minutes of 2012 and there's some things that you have been called away from. And even some people you better cut loose. I said it a lot this year. Your destiny is relied upon who you, who you are connected to and who you're willing to disconnect from. Is anybody glad that God called them? Uh huh. The calling of the uh, to eternal glory is fivefold. Stand with me. Greater organization, greater ability, greater relationship, greater vision, greater productivity. Uh huh. In the organization, the Lord is bringing order to our lives in the new year. In ability, uh, Ephesians three and twenty says, "And now unto Him which is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we ask or think." Greater vision and dreams. Joel said, "In the last days, said God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy." Greater productivity. Jeremiah twenty nine and eleven. For I know the thoughts I think toward you, said the Lord. The thoughts to bless you, and give you a good end. So when I came in tonight, Milton was up here saying. What I've been saying all this past month, bigger, brighter, better, yes. He does not just call us out, but he calls us up and in. He calls us up and in, the direction is upward, it's called higher. He calls us to eternal glory. Glory is not a low place. All right, let me move this train. He's called us. You don't want to stay in the basement when he said the penthouse is available. I was preaching some years ago now for Bishop Dennis Leonard in Denver, Colorado, and they, I was by myself on this trip, and I got there, the limousine picked me up, and they took me to the Rich Carlton. Beautiful room, picture window of the mountains, hallelujah. Just too much room for one night and one person, it's just wonderful, you know, all kind of stuff, big baskets and, and a beautiful uh, king-sized bed and all this kind of stuff. And uh, the phone rings. And uh, the man on the other end, he said, uh, Bishop Trotter? I said, yes. He says, uh, we are, want to apologize. We put you in the wrong room. I said, oh, no, I, this room is wonderful. <laughs> it's a long way from Holiday Inn and Red Roof Inn. The carpet was so deep. I'm, I said, I'm, I'm fine. This room. He said, no. And they had, they had water there and all kinds of stuff. He said, no, 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 no. I said, he said, well, we'll be there in a minute. What you doing? I said, I'm unpacking. He said, please don't unpack. Because we got to come and move you. I said, well, I'm ready to get unpacked and get ready for ministry tonight. And so they came upstairs in a cart and took all of my things and put them on the cart. And we got on the elevator. And I said, what floor shall I push? And he said, push PH. I said, what? what in the world? I was trying to act like I knew, you know. Oh, what is that? I want to say presidential habitation. I don't know what it meant. I'm trying to act like I know. You know, you've been in a situation where you try to act like you know, you know. So I, I pushed PH. And this room didn't have one door. It had two swinging doors. And the doors swing open. I'm going to stretch you now. I get inside. There's a white baby grand piano. Two bedrooms. A full bar for sanctified drinks. You know, man. You can, <laughs> Hallelujah. On, on the bed was a certificate. It says when you get ready, there's a facial waiting on you. A massage. Hallelujah. Pedicure and manicure. And I said to them, I said, uh, how did I deserve all that? They said, before you left Chicago, favor was already prearranged on your behalf. I stopped by here tonight to tell you whatever you do, don't unpack. Because you're getting ready to be called to eternal glory. Somebody holler higher. Now let me tell you this. I got 10 minutes to count. Let me tell you this. If you can't handle me now, you will not be able to like me next year this time. Tell somebody that if you can't handle me now, you won't be able to like me next year this time. 
it's over. My low living is over. My basement days are over. My negative vibe is over. I gotta go now. I gotta go. I gotta go. Be not dismayed. Whatever betide, God will. Shake somebody's hand and say, God will take care of you. So I got my third point. This third point. I'll wait till Sunday and do that. It's over because he's the God of all grace. It's over because he called us up and out. But lastly, take this with you this year. It's over because he put a time limit on our suffering. The text says, after you have suffered a while. Our suffering was never allowed, Mickey, to be on us permanently. Suffering for a while is being exchanged for glory, which is eternal. The text said this suffering comes uh, 16 times. You'll find suffering in this book. And those blessings that come after suffering are fourfold. The first one is to perfect. That means he's going to equip you, adjust you, and fit you together. The second one is to establish, to fix firmly, to set fast. And then he's going to strengthen you to make you stronger. But I got stuck on the word settled, and I take an exit here. As when he says, I'm going to lay a foundation and bring closure to anything that hurts you. And so when we say it's over, just like there's an expiration date on your milk. You know, I, didn't, I didn't know until recently the expiration date be on freezer food and canned goods. You know, we just be eating it. Yeah. But. Just like there's an expiration date on your bread, just like there's an expiration date on your meat and your canned goods and your medicine, tonight is over because God is settling you. Seven minutes and counting. Not long ago, I was trying to get to O'Hare, my second home. Traffic was bad. And it started raining real bad. I got to get to American Airlines. And uh, I'm running, but upon my arrival, I, I'm thinking they probably didn't delay the flight because it's raining. I never, why, I never understood why y'all say cats and dogs, I guess because it makes poodles or pu puddles. I don't know. Why. <laughs> Anything may come out to pass my curfew. And so I run to the gate. And much to my surprise, they were boarding. I said, they boarding in the storm? You know, 10 minutes to boarding time, got to get here, so, so, so. So I said to the flight attendant, I said, this is terrible. Why would they take off in all of this bad weather and put all of, our, all of us, all our people's, our people's lives in danger? That's Ebonics. I shall never forget her response. She said, Mr. Bishop, we fly based upon where we are going, not based upon where we're leaving. It's been stormy in 2012, but it's going to be calm in 2013. Tell somebody it's over. It was hard in 2012, but it's going to be easy in 2013 because he limited. So when we move to the other side, don't you lose no more uh, sleep and crying about what happened in 12 because it's safe to land in 13. Somebody's going to land in 13. Give God the kind of praise. Come on, give him the kind of praise. It may be stormy now. 